Hi. Um, this is Jamie from Red Bank Public Library, and we're good. And we're doing power play. And today we'll be making paper dolls. And yes, I'm wearing silly hat today. This is Mimikyu for Pokemon. Yeah, but here's a look at like you can make any type of animal that you would want. And see, like um, I put like a layer of tape over this and on the clothes, so it just easily comes off. And then you could just stick it back on with tape. But I'll show you how to do that. And you could do all types of little outfits and such. And you can do it um, with um, with the packaging tape, or you could do a scotch tape. Let's see. And I'll show you another little outfit you can have. Yeah, this one was done with the scotch tape. Like not as clear as the other one, but it's still effective. And let me show you. Yeah, you even made like little hair pieces. Not that she has hair, but you know, she could put it on her ears. It's like a little doggy, a little pink doggy. And it's really cool because then it's like your own little toy that you could play with right afterwards. So I'm trying to think what type of creature to make today for this. I should probably put clothes on her. There we are. I like to mix and match. So I'm going to show you how to make a paper doll and also little outfits you can make. So probably the best shape to start out with. And you could turn it to any type of creature that you want after this. Um, let's see. So start out with a circle. Okay. And then from here, you can make little arms. And it's okay if things aren't completely even. I mean, try and make it as even as possible. It's okay if it's not, because we'll find a... Uh, because I'm gonna show you how to make the clothes fit, no matter what. So, little arms. Yeah. And then like this. So this is probably like a really easy shape to go with and then from here you could turn it to like a tiger, a dinosaur, a dog, a cat, a unicorn. You could do whatever you want. So let's see. First off, try and think what type of little creature to make. Hmm. Well I've done bunnies in the past already but Let's see if there's any other creatures. Maybe I'll do a red panda because um, my sister really loves red pandas. And they sort of look like, sort of a little bit like raccoons and pandas. Let's see, I'm gonna look up a reference for it. All right, red pandas. And I'll show you what it looks like. Let's get it. Yeah, that's a good picture of the red panda. It's cute, right? All right. So now that we have this shape, so it's just a circle, two little arms, almost like you make a little gingerbread man. Two little legs. Okay. And I'm gonna start with the ears. Yeah, after every step, I'll, you know, show you up here. Okay. And you can make like, 
I'm actually making the face come out just a little bit more. Like you see how it's like I had the circle, but then I kind of brought it out just a little bit more because that's how the red panda's face is shaped a little bit, like the fur goes out. Two circles for eyes. So usually animals they have like really like dark eyes and then they'll and then the white part here that's like the little shine like when the light shines on you could probably see the shine in my eyes okay and now for the little it's a little muzzle <laughs> and little nose And I'm gonna do a little mouth, so sort of like that little, like the number three. And then I'm gonna add little fang teeth to it, like this. <laughs> Cute, right? All right. And it looks like it has a little bit of like white over here, like little like marks here and right above the eyes almost makes it look like it has angry eyebrows but it's not angry cute and then this animal has a tail so this is the part that mostly looks like a raccoon because they have like sort of like the little striped tails i think they're round rounder though then i need a good picture of the tail let's see sure i'm not missing anything here Now oh, there's there's a picture of the tail. So we could do something like that. So yeah, it's a little more circular at the end. All right. So pretty much okay. And to make it a little simpler for this part, I put like little lines to represent the paws. So I did that on the feet and I did that on the little hands here. And now probably it's best to um, outline it in a black marker and um, you can use a sharpie um, you can use a pen so there's like a black pen so i'm gonna try it with this though let's see because that will really bring out lines that you want It's almost like making your own little coloring page. And we are going to be making the clothes soon, but first we kind of need the body first. Now I'm going to do the eyes. Now if you want the eyes to be a different color than black, um, just leave it, um, you know, uncolored, but I do want it black, so I am going to color them in right now. Whoops. <laughs> All right, I'm doing the markings. And we're gonna do the little muzzle, little mouth. We're gonna do the nose. 
the little mouth, the little fangs, and let's also do the arms. All in one shot right here. Like that. Okay, and I'm gonna make the tail, but I'm gonna make it like fuzzy though. By and like the little lines like that coming out like that. And I gotta put the stripes on. And I think it looks pretty good. So now you have well, might want to erase some of the pencil lines. Like, make sure you have like a eraser that's nice and clean so it doesn't smudge. And um, if you do have a lot of um, graphite on there, you could just um, take like a separate sheet of paper, like a like a scrap paper, and just erase until it's nice and clean. And when you're erasing, do it nice and gently because you don't want to accidentally get rid of the outline um, because it will fade if you do it too hard. And to color, you can use markers, crayons, color pencils, whatever you're most comfortable with. So there he is. He looks good. Now, red pandas. Yeah, I know they're mostly red, but they're kind of a little orange, too. They're like almost like an orange red. So I might want to find something like that. Ooh, that's a good one. Yeah, red orange. Crayola. And let's see, the ears have to be black white. So I won't color those. But I'm gonna give it a nice red. Perfect. And let me see if I can color up here so you guys can see a little bit. It might be a little hard, but let's try it out. And maybe I can put a little tape so it will stay up a little bit. Okay. Because I don't want you to just stare at me, staring at the page the whole time, you know? Because that's not fun. Yeah, did you see how um, people are making like those obstacle courses in their driveway? Like they'll use like chalk and they'll use, and they'll make like little hopscotch. They'll make um, like a little path for you to follow. And like there's different like things to jump and to, and almost like a little like, like a little race. Like, and you have to do like all these different things. I've been wanting to do that. It's, it's, um, it looks like a lot of fun. Yeah, and they'll even have you like leap like a frog and such. Yeah, usually I color a little darker, but I don't want it to take like a really long time for you guys like the color in case you want to move on to the next step. So I'm gonna 
I just need a darker red for that part though. I could use the same red. Or not brown. I think I did see brown on the go like this. Make those stripes. Put that little nose in. And let's see what the color on the inside of the ears. Oh, it's actually from what I see a dark brown. <laughs> when I cut when I pressed on it for some reason, like it like one of those like gifts that came up and it changed to like a a red panda sticking its tongue out of me. So but yeah, that's what the ears look like. Alright, so All right, and now for this part, you have to use scissors. So I'll go get my scissors. Okay, and now I'm gonna cut them out. Yeah, and the reason why we're doing this is um, we actually will need to trace his body in order for us to make clothes and that's how you get it to fit every time yeah if you have trouble like cutting things out you might want to ask an adult to help you I think I'm gonna name him Ray. I don't know why, but like Renard or something. Yeah, I think I'll call him Renard. I'm kind of name, name him after this fox from one of my favorite stories. I don't want to go too fast for you guys, so this is what it looks like right now. Just a little happy. A little high. And um, let's just say you have a hard time like drawing characters. Um, something um, my sister remembered that, that we do. Um, we would get uh, at our coloring pages and we cut those out and we make puppets out of those. Um, we actually put those on popsicle sticks. Like we, um, we took the Lion King coloring book and we cut out the characters and we colored them. Put them on popsicle sticks and then we used to play out the story. Yeah, Red Panda. Yeah, his name's Renard. Okay, so now we're gonna make this guy some clothes. Well, we still have a lot left of this paper, so let's try to use it up. Yeah, because we don't want to waste paper. Let me see, I'll bring this closer so you can see it a little bit better. All right, so for this part, now we're going to trace his body. Just the important parts, though, like right over here to make clothes. You'll definitely want to know where the arms are, where the legs are, where his tail is. And if I want to give him a hat or something like that, I 
just have to kind of know where his head is. So a little bit like that. See, it doesn't have to be perfect. Um, that's pretty much just a marker of um, oh, where I'm going to put things so it fits on his little body. And we'll make them two outfits. Hey, get over here, you. Oh, I forgot. I should probably laminate him right now. But I guess we'll do that later. All right, little head. Oops. Head, arm. It's hard drawn up like this. All right, so while you're tracing that, I will show you how to laminate him. All right, so take your tape. And we're gonna break y'all, so use scotch tape. So we're gonna put him like this, right across there. And we're gonna need another piece of tape. So it's on its own little spread right there. And then put tape on the other side too so that it's nice and sealed in. Now when it's laminated like this, you can, um, you know, keep tape and clothes on him without him getting destroyed. Also, you could probably, like, you know, if you accidentally spilled something on him or something, it'll be good. Okay. So, I'm just going to cut him out really fast, and then I'll show you how to make the clothes. Now, when you're cutting him out, you want to leave, um, I'll show you with Cassie here. That's why I named the little dog. Now, you see, when I cut her out, I left a little bit here like an outline because that's going to help like keep it together like um, the tape needs to stay together but if you cut it too close to like the paper um it'll start kind of like falling apart so you do want that edge so that's what we're going to do for this one Yeah, and it's always leave to leave a lot more than um, because like you can always go back and trim it later if you feel like it's too big. Let me see if I can get this on camera. Right. Here. And see, like, it's a little too much over here, so now I could go back and trim it. There we are. Ta-da! He's nice and shiny now. Woo! Okay, so now let's make him some clothes. So I thought it might be cute to make him like a little ninja outfit. So let me just see him here. So his little mouth would be right there. So we might want to 
and go put a line there for the little ninja outfit, right? Yeah, actually, this is probably like the easiest outfit to make because, you know, it's like a one, almost like a one piece black suit, right? But then you could put a little, a little, uh, let's see, like belt. And we'll put some ninja stars on there. And maybe he could hold a ninja star too. So. Yeah, that's the really cool thing about this. You can make like little uh, accessories. Yeah, and that looks pretty good. We'll complete that because I want his tail to stick out. So I'm gonna be coloring that black soon. Um, let's see for the next outfit, I'm trying to think. Maybe it could be like a little Pokemon fan. I'm gonna have him have like maybe a shirt with a little Pikachu on it. Making them like short sleeves. So his paws are actually gonna show through this one. That's a shirt. He's gonna have a little shorts. And let's make a little Pikachu face. This. Yeah, I don't know if you'd be able to see that, but yeah, made him like a little outfit. Oh, make him pajamas. Oh, that's a good idea. Maybe I'll be Pikachu pajamas. Yeah, let's see. I just need to draw down here first to kind of make a little bit of a better Pikachu face. It's hard to draw Pikachu like. Yeah, that looks a little better. Okay, so we're gonna do pajamas. I think Megan had a good idea. And maybe I'll make him have little Pokeballs on his um, pants there. So I'll do that really fast. Driving across the moon. Yep. Okay. Yeah, you might be wondering if I'm a Pokemon fan, but yeah, totally am. Okay, so there we are. And now this is the part where we can color. Mm -hmm, that's violet. <laughs> These things always fool me all the time. I always think like, oh, that's black. It's violet. Sorry, that's brown. Blue indigo. Look, look how close these colors look. Yeah, right now I'm looking through my little treasure chest over here of uh, cult pencils. So I got this nice box from Sierra and I decided to put my cult pencils in it. It's my box of dreams. Huh, more indigo. Black, finally. See, this is why it's important to read. Because if you didn't read the labels on these things, you would accidentally use indigo or violet. Yeah, I'm just gonna outline a little bit there. And let's see if I could color from this angle. I wonder if I should make a little, like, top room, too, over here. So his eyes would be about here. And it's okay if I draw them. Hmm. I don't know. I think that might make it a little too complicated to add a top. So I'll just keep it as is for now.
Yeah, I probably could use the marker, but I don't have like a really big marker right now. And also if you're not sure that the marker is going to like bleed or something, sometimes it's better to use crayons or color pencils. Because sometimes markers could be a little tricky, depending on the type of marker or even just like the color. Like some colors tend to bleed a little more than others. And by bleed, I mean that the ink will start like going outside the line, even though you are coloring inside the line. Okay, that looks good. Maybe I'll give him a little purple belt. Oh no, that's indigo. <laughs> All right, violet. Because ninjas typically want to have dark colors on because they want to blend in. That's their whole purpose is blending in. All right. And I'll color the little pajamas too. So now you can outline this all if you want. But I don't think it's too necessary. Pikachu. All right, so, all right, now Pokeballs need a little red at the top. Oh, I just got the cutest idea. Maybe I'll make him a little switch. Maybe he could be holding like a little switch or something, but maybe I'll do that later though. Color is pants blue around the pokeballs. Yeah. And then just a little red over here because. I think it's probably best to leave the pajama top white. That's just the look I'm going for. Okay, so now it's time to cut out the outfits. Now this could be a little hard, the ninja star. But then the rest of the body will be easy. Sometimes it's a little hard to cut when it's nice and tiny details. So that's why it's usually best to go simpler. I think the ninja stars are the only thing that's going to give me a little problem here. So not too bad. You know, typically with paper dolls, they usually have um, these little tabs on them, and then you would fold the tabs over over on the character. But I thought it would be better to actually just um, laminate with tape and then stick it on with tape, because I feel like that would last longer. And also you'd be able to play with them without all this stuff falling off. Now you see here, like I might have drawn the hand there, but we don't. We're going to cut the hand off here because we want to be able to see his hand, his little paw. All right. Yeah, it turned out we didn't need the head on that one unless we were going to make a nightcap. But that's not the type of pajamas that he has. 
let's see, see? And just right in the center right here. Go to add little Pikachu pajamas. Oh, where'd the ninja go? There it is. Now, you might be um, wanting to stick them right on them, but um, first you should laminate first. And I'll show you how to do it with the packaging tape again, and then one with scotch tape. So packaging tape. All right, you put the tape flat on the table with the sticky part up, and then, and then you stick it like that. And you'll typically need to use two pieces to cover up the whole part. See? And then now we're going to put tape on top of here to seal it. nice and sealed and again you want to leave an outline like you could see that I did that on the little dog's clothes here and you won't have to worry because like um it's clear so it will you'll be able to see through it and still see the character and it will work with the scotch tape as well, though it's a little, um, like you'll see, like it's a little frosty in comparison to the um, packaging tape, but it works. Like you'll still see the character right through. Here we are, and let's try it on him. First, I'm gonna put him up here so you guys can see him. Then, I'm gonna use like rolled up tape, like that. Put it right on the back. Stick it right on his body. Ooh, yeah, he looks good. He's gonna go sneaking around. Being a ninja, throwing ninja stars. And now, let's do his pajamas. And I'm gonna put little Cassie up too. Yeah, you might just have to switch out the tape every now and then. All right, here's the dress. And you see like, even though like, it has like the little outline here, like it, it, you could still see the character right through it. So I'm gonna said I was gonna show you with the scotch tape. With this one, you're gonna need a little more. Yeah, I think either two or three pieces. Let's see how it does. Oh, just two pieces. That's good. And then the same as the other one, you take, you have to seal it in. Okay, and now time to cut it out. And my scissors are starting to get a little squeaky, probably because I'm cutting a lot of sticky stuff. So I'm probably gonna have to clean them later. It's a little soap and water. 
can see. Nice and see-through. And now let's try the pajamas on him. He's like, no, I want to be a ninja. <laughs> oh, wait, these are nice. Little Pokemon pajamas. Nice. Now he's ready to go to bed. <laughs> yeah, so that's how you make paper dolls. And remember, you could do it like any type of your creature that you want. And before we go, I would like to read a story or two. So this is one of my favorite books from when I was a kid, A Fish Out of Water by Helen Palmer. And it's illustrated by P.T. Eastman. All right. This little fish, I said to Mr. Carp, I want him, I like him, and he likes me. I will call him Otto. And I, I want that I want that little turtle actually. That's why I would get if I was there. Very well, said Mr. Carp. Now I will tell you how to feed him. Alright, here's the instructions. Then Mr. Carp told me, when you feed a fish, never feed him a lot. So much and no more. Never more than a spot. Or something may happen. You never know what. Okay. Let's see if he follows the directions. Then I took Otto home. I gave him some food. I did not give him much, just one little spot. But this did not make Otto happy. He wanted more food. He had to have more. Poor Otto. He just had to have more. Oh, is that Sierra? Hi, Sierra. I knew that Mr. Carp I knew what Mr. Carp had told me. Never feed him a lot, never more than a spot, or something may happen, you never know what. But I gave Otto all the food in the box. Oh boy. Oh man. Then something did happen. My little Otto began to grow. I saw him grow. I saw him grow and grow. Soon he was too big for his little fish bowl. Oh jeez. There was just one thing to do. I put Otto in the flower bowl. There, Otto, I said. This will hold you. But no, the flower bowl did not hold him. Otto went right on growing. This was not funny. Not funny at all. His tail was growing right up out of the top. Oh, jeez. I grabbed the flower bowl. I ran with it. Otto, I said, I know just where to put you. Then you'll be all right. I put him in a big pot, but Otto was not all right. I saw him grow some more. Very soon he was too big for the pot. Oh, oh goodness. <laughs> I put him in the pot after pot, but he was growing so fast. Poor Otto, my poor little fish. Oh, why did I feed him so much? Otto, I said, stop growing, please. But Otto could not stop growing. He was growing all the time. Very soon I ran out of pots. Otto had to have water. Yeah, fish need water. They, there was just one thing to do. I did it. I grabbed him. I grabbed him by the tail. I ran with him up to the tub. The tub is big. It could hold lots of water. Ooh. At last. There, Otto, I said. This tub holds my father. This tub holds my mother. So it will hold you. Oh, but the tub did not hold him at all. He went right on growing. Oh, Otto, I said, what can I do now? Yeah, this is my favorite page. Then crash, the door went down, crash. Otto went down, I went down too. Oh, what a ride. Down went the water into the cellar. And down went Otto too. I had to do something fast. I grabbed the phone. I called the policeman. Help, help, I said. I fed my fish too much. Mr. Carp told me not to, but I did. What? said the policeman. Mr. Carp told you not to, but you did? Too bad. I will come at once. The policeman came. My fish went that way, I said. He is down in a cellar. 
The policeman ran down with me. What a fish, he said. He is much too big to keep in the cellar. He will, we will have to get him out. Oh, what are we gonna do with him? Oh, geez. We had to work and work to get Otto out. Poor Otto. Oh, why did I feed him too much? Mr. Carp told me something would happen, and it did. It did. That's why it's important to listen to instructions. <laughs> Now we had Otto out of the cellar, but now Otto had no water, no water at all. A fish has to have water, I said to the policeman. We must take him to water. Get help. Call for help on the radio. The policeman called on the radio. He called the fireman. Help, help, he said. A boy has fed a fish too much. A boy has fed, have fed a fish too much? We will come at once. I don't know, is this something like a this her so much <laughs> oh boy the firemen came they all helped to get otto up but where can we take him i asked uptown downtown to the pool yelled the fireman to the pool i yelled and please hurry Ugh. He, uh, he looks a little sick he's like oh jeez. all right they did hurry. The fire truck with Otto came right up to the pool. The firemen yelled, Everyone get out of the pool! This fish is going in! Ooh. Down the pool went Otto, into the pool with a big, big splash. Now I was happy. Now at last my Otto had water. Lots of water. This big pool was just a thing. This big pool would hold him. But Otto went right on growing, and no one wanted Otto in the pool. They did not like Otto at all. You take that fish out of there, they yelled. <laughs> oh boy. There was just one thing to do. I did it. I ran to the phone. I called Mr. Carp. Please, please help me, I said. I fed Otto too much. Oh dear, said Mr. Carp. So you fed him too much. I knew you would. would. I always say don't, but you boys always do. Yes, I will come. Oh boy. Then Mr. Carp came. He had a black box in his hand. He had a lot of other things too. What are you going to do, Mr. Carp? I asked him, but Mr. Carp said nothing. He just went right to the pool. He took his black box with him and all the other things too. Splash! Mr. Carp jumped into the pool. Splash! Now Otto went down too. All I could see was his tail. I could not see Mr. Carp at all. What was going on down there? What were they doing down there in the water? Oh, it's a whirlpool. Now I could see nothing. Not Otto, not Mr. Carp, nothing at all. Would I see my Otto again? Would I see Mr. Carp again? Mr. Carp, Mr. Carp, I yelled. What are you doing? Are you all right? Then up jumped Mr. Carp. In his hand was a little fish bowl. In the bowl was my Otto. Mr. Carp had made him little again. Don't ask me how I did it, he said, but here is your fish. I don't know, I, I kind of want to know how he did it, but okay. And from now on, said Mr. Carp, please do not feed him too much, just so much and no more. Now, that is what I always do. I Now I feed Otto so much and no more. Now, never more than a spot or something may happen. And now I know what. I'm wondering if that's how Clifford got so big. Like the big red dog. All right. The end with that. And I think we have time for one more story. This is one of my favorites. My Very Own Octopus by Bernard Most. Yeah, actually, I did get to meet him. When I was younger, he came to my school. Yeah, I gave him a little drawing. Yeah, I always really liked his illustrations. My very own octopus. I wish I had a pet of my own. I can't have a dog. I can't have a cat. I can't even have a rabbit since they make my brother sneeze. But who ever heard of an octopus making anybody sneeze? I never did. I wish I had octopus. Oh boy. It would be easy to take an octopus home. My octopus would sit in the back with me. I 
think that's a little distracting for the drivers. Okay. My octopus and I could play baseball together. We'd be a whole team all by ourselves. Nobody would be able to hit the ball past us. Not even my brother, Glenn, who was the best hitter of them all. Oops. Almost missed the page. When we had dinner, my octopus could pass the salt and the pepper and the ketchup and the mustard whenever I needed them. And when we finished, my octopus could help me, my brother, and... Oh, sorry. My octopus could help my brother and me clear the table. Of course, we would share our allowance with my octopus for helping us. Well, that's nice of them. All right. It'd be great fun to take a bath with my octopus because we both love water. I could have my back scrubbed and my hair washed all at the same time, and I would never have to worry about losing my soap. When I go to sleep, my octopus could help me hug all my animals all at one time and keep the covers from sliding off the bed. Aww. Oh, look at that. They even have a picture. <laughs> Oh, I could take out more books from the library because my octopus could help me carry them home. My octopus would like to read books, too. Hey, that's a cute picture. My octopus would come with me to the next time we went to pick apples. I bet we could pick apples enough to last 10 years. On, on Halloween, my octopus could go around with me and we could collect more treats than Glenn and all the other kids, people would wonder who my friends is with such a great costume. In the winter, my octopus and I could beat anybody in a snowball fight, even my brother Glenn, who was the best snowball maker of them all. <laughs> My octopus and I could shovel the driveway for my dad. Of course, my dad would have to buy lots more shovels, but he wouldn't mind. Then I lose one of my mittens, which I always seem to do. My octopus would always have an extra mittens for me to wear. But what about his tentacle? That, now he's cold. My room would always look neat because my octopus would help me put away all my clothes. And when my friend David came to visit, my octopus would help us put away all the toys. Sometimes my octopus and I would have a fight, like my brother and me. But it would be fun when we make friends again. We would shake and 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 shake. And shake. We would always take my octopus to the store when we went shopping. Our cart would be filled in no time at all. And anything our cart couldn't hold, my octopus would. I never would get wet again walking home from school in the rain. And neither would my brother or any of our friends. Oh boy. And the next time that big bully at school picks on me, my octopus would show him. That bully will never pick on me or my friends again. And whenever I fell and cried or hurt myself, my octopus would always be there to help me and hug 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 me. I wish I had my very own octopus. The end. So, wait, guys, like, would you want octopus as a pet? A or any other crazy animals? <laughs> and why? You can write in the comments. Okay, so, all right, time for us to go now, but, all right, bye, everybody. See you soon. <laughs>